Our journeys as educators, activists, or anyone who desires to make change are often not linear. As a result of this, there will be times in any activist's journey where it will feel like we aren't making progress at all. Much of what we learn in school about how significant change happens is focused on hero worship. We are socialized to believe that change occurs because a once-in-a-generation leader shows up and makes it happen. Because this is the way that our history books remember freedom movements, it is easy to trivialize our own ability to make change. In the midst of my efforts to make change, I have found myself falling into the trap of self-doubt. Who am I to believe that I am the one to move or shift systems that have been around for so much longer than I have? Systems that are so much bigger than I am, and systems that are so resistant to change. People read books written by experts, and my professional and educational experience would suggest that I am one of those. However, I actually think the story that needs to be told is a story of overcoming. Overcoming doubt. Overcoming real and perceived limitations. Overcoming racism. In my journey to overcome, I have found that the person who makes the most change isn't always the person who knows the most. Typically, the people who make the most change are the ones who have the ability to cut through the noise. There is now, and has always been, a lot of noise around the topic of ending racism. One would think that everyone could get behind the idea that racism is bad and should be dug up from the roots in the systems that we all have to exist in. Instead, recently, many states made it illegal to teach about racism in schools. Historically, anti-racism advocates have faced ridicule, violence, false imprisonment, and in some cases, death. It goes without saying that the noise that surrounds anti-racism work is so loud that it is often deafening. The noise serves to paralyze us into cynicism, to keep us stuck in doubt, grief, or guilt. The noise aims to drown out our voices and make it harder for us to communicate with one another. Toni Morrison describes the noise this way. The function, the very serious function of racism, is distraction. It keeps you explaining over and over again your reason for being. Somebody says you have no language, and you spend 20 years proving that you do. Somebody says your head isn't shaped properly, so you have scientists working on the fact that it is. Somebody says you have no art, so you dredge that up. None of that is necessary. 